Hey guys, Dan Lucchese here with the Lucchese Property Group for the December monthly market update here in Denver. Um, we're kind of changing our format just a little bit. Um, we are still going to provide you with all of the market stats that we've been kind of talking about over the last few months. But we're going to put those down below in the email so that you guys can sort of read that on your own. I'll highlight a couple of the really key points, but what I want to use this time to do is talk a little bit more about some of the um, the storyline, the story that's going on in the market and the kinds of questions and conversations that I'm um, fielding. So let's dive right in, okay? Um, so I wanna point out, I wanna start by setting the stage that active inventory actually sharply dropped month over month again. Again, the data's below. 60% um, of the properties are selling and or they're going under contract in less than seven days. And then of those closing, 22% sold at list price, and then above and beyond that, 48% sold for over the list price. So the market is screaming hot seller's market, right? That is very, very clear, there's no confusion there. The question would be why? Well, you know, one of the things, one of the talking points of what's driving that has been, of course, housing affordability. And I know I have this conversation a lot. A lot of people are under the impression that, that housing is not affordable in Denver and that it's, it's very expensive, in fact. Housing affordability is driven by those three factors, the price, the income growth, and the interest rate. Right now, the interest rate is the key variable that we're paying attention to. Income growth, surprisingly, is actually pretty good um, amidst COVID. I know that a lot of people are struggling and feeling the pain out there. And, and yet the reality of the market is that there are a lot of people who are, are also thriving and having a great year. Um, and so the interest rate. Right now, uh, if you were to look at the average home price right now, this uh, for November was $604,000, give or take. And if you looked at a, uh, imagine buying a $604,000 house in December of 2019, and you said, okay, we're same 10% down payment, um, whether it's 10% or five or 20, but, but assume a same 10% down payment um, on the average price home, because of the super low interest rates compared to last year, it's actually only costing the buyer 2.5% more. So in terms of monthly payment, so effectively your monthly payment is only two and a half percent higher than it would have been if you bought a $604,000 house a year ago. So that is what's allowing buyers to continue moving forward with the decision to purchase. They can afford more home and so there's multiple offers and, and they're competing. There's also incredibly low inventory, which is a big factor contributing to those multiple offers, but it's the low inventory and the, um, and the low interest rate that's allowing people to compete and, and pay more for home, which is what's driving the prices up. Um, but, but the National Association of Realtors uh, just indicated um, from one of their economists that two things. Number one, uh, this, is, this is the best winter that they've seen in any time in recent history for home sales. So the market is very active, it is, it is hot. Normally we see a winter slowdown and uh, yes, it's the winter is slower than the peak selling season uh, in pretty much all markets nationwide. But what is what they're saying is the winter mark, the winter market specifically compared to past winter markets, is way out there on another playing field. I mean, we're having a fantastic winter market. The other thing that they said was they don't expect it to slow. I know a lot of people are sort of opportunistically looking for. Um, uh, you know, hey, when the when prices drop, that's when I'll buy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I really am encouraging people not to focus on that because, uh, and there's a lot more to that. And I would love to tell you why. Give me a call, and I I will be happy to dig in deeper as to why that is. But the short of it is that um, you're you're trying to time the market, and if it doesn't happen, then you're worse off than just buying your home. Right, it's better to get into a house and start building the equity and um, building that long-term wealth for your family than it is to try to time the market, uh, you know, from one year to the next. Because twenty years down the road, it's not going to matter that much. Um, and 
fundamentally, I agree. I don't believe that we're going to see a bunch of big price drops, uh, even with the delinquencies um, that I just mentioned. I think that's going to have an impact, but it's not going to cause the market to just tank and all of a sudden that $600,000 house, you'll be able to get it for four hundred. I don't see that happening. There's too many people moving to Denver. Um, so then one other uh, article that I've been told about, I haven't actually seen it yet, but I look forward to reading, but I just want to share the concept with you guys, um, which is explaining why the market is uh, behaving the way that it is. Why is it so hot? And why is there so much demand even amongst COVID? Um, and what it's essentially is, is uh, saying is that it has nothing to do with the interest rates or jobs or any of those factors, but is in fact uh, delayed adulthood, right? And speaking of the millennials, this is, this is what has been explained to me don't uh, don't get upset at me. These are not any judgments on my end. But what they're essentially saying is that um, millennials, as a demographic, have demonstrated um, delayed adulthood. Like in other words, they have waited longer to buy their first home, get married, start families, and you know all of those things are the fundamentals that really drive real estate at the end of the day i mean some people will opportunistically um, sell their house and buy a nicer house and kind of upscale but the real reason that we see most people doing that is is life and family changes and so that's really what this article is saying is that now millennials are at an age where it's kind of like okay time to do those things so for the couple that's getting married a lot of times that's a trigger to to buy their first house for the family that's you know having a kid that may or may not be the trigger that gets them into buying a house or staying in the current house and and certainly as family size grows um people need more house and and that's you know we've known that for through through history so um it's really saying essentially that now we're seeing a huge wave of millennials that are are buying real estate and it's time in their lives so um and if that's correct those are fundamentals that uh that doesn't matter what the interest rate is doing it isn't going to matter uh you know how much job growth there is if people can afford to buy a house they will because uh, millennials, I think, do ultimately still believe in home ownership. I know there's been some debate there, but um, anyways, that's what's going on in our market. I know this was a really long video. We'll try to keep the rest of them in the future a lot shorter, but here's the takeaway. Guys, I do know a lot about the market, what's going on here, what's not going on, and what's as much as I can, what's driving it. And if you ever have questions and just want to pick my brain, uh, I want to be here for, for you guys as a real estate resource. So give me a call. Uh, as always, our contact information is below. And I look forward to talking to you. Dan Lucchese with the Lucchese Property Group.